The more pictures emerge of the fighting, the more it looks like a civil war. There are various front lines. This just one in the big town of Misrata. If these pictures look upsetting, then nothing compared to the rest. Odd then that the government says it's trying not to cause too much death and destruction there. Very odd that Gaddafi himself appears entirely blind to details like civilians or children being hurt. We have cells that were activated, took up weapons to kill policemen, kill soldiers. There were casualties on both sides for two or three days and weapons were stolen. Now on both sides, the army and the police aside, the rebels, there have been at the most 100 people killed. Out in the desert, it's obviously less important if Gaddafi's military can't shoot straight, and it has been striking how inaccurate their bombing runs have been from the air. While it's true that some weapons dumps have been destroyed, in many places the warplanes have continually missed their targets. But even if on occasion the rebels do find a way of shooting one down, air supremacy remains a huge psychological advantage for Gaddafi. When we arrived, we didn't find any opposition because the people here are good. The people welcome us and greet us. But when we were inside, two Mirage planes overflew us and one helicopter. They wanted to shoot, but we shot them first. All the same, if there are questions over the aptitude of the Libyan military, then the same must go for the rebel forces, whose euphoric advance was met with organized resistance they couldn't handle, and so little hospitals have been overwhelmed. It's also emerging that many of the fighters have no idea how to use their weapons and are injuring themselves. Some of these pictures suggest a desire to fight is all well and good until the reality of armed battle hits home. So with the prospects of the country tearing itself to pieces, it's hardly surprising that voices close to the regime are once again urging dialogue. The hope in this intervention on Libyan TV must have been that it sounded better than if it had come from Gaddafi. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a chance in history. We are threatened and need to act today to work on preparing for national dialogue and to calm the violence so Libyans all over the country can feel safe and secure and at peace so we can go back to school and work. Gaddafi supporters in Tripoli might buy that argument. The east of the country might think it a trick. But as time goes on and the violence looks open-ended, it's not as though anyone else has any better ideas. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera.